In today's video, I will compare the two popular diets, the keto diet versus the carnivore diet. I will dive into the science behind each diet, look into some research, and look into how each of them affects health in the short and in the long term, and help you to answer the question, which diet is better, keto or carnivore? I will share an objective view, not allowing my personal preferences to affect this video, and I hope you will do the same. I will answer the question using science. So first, let us look at the typical macros of each diet. They are both low in carbs, and then the low-carb keto diet is higher in fat and moderate in protein, while the carnivore diet is lower in fat and higher in protein. As you can imagine, they will have some similarities because of both being low in carbs. However, there are a few key differences. The low carb keto diet is typically higher in non starchy vegetables, resulting in it being a bit higher in carbs. On keto, you can have up to 50 grams of net carbs a day, but of course, you don't have to count anything. It is also higher in fiber, while the carnivore diet, also called the zero carb diet, is all about eating only animal foods. Fiber is seen as the cause of poor health, together with other toxic plant compounds, such as antinutrients. As a general rule, nutrients are the beneficial compounds found in foods, while antinutrients are the harmful compounds found in foods. However, this is not always true. For example, antinutrients found in grains and beans are much more harmful and are found in much greater amounts in these foods, when compared to antinutrients found in most fruits and vegetables. And then some antinutrients are actually good for us. A good example of this is coffee. Coffee is high in antinutrients that can inhibit mineral absorption. However, if we look at the long term health studies, all the meta analysis, we can clearly see that drinking coffee increases your life expectancy. It reduces your risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and dementia. So, would we call coffee bad and never consume it? again, because it contains antinutrients. I would say looking at the bigger picture and seeing how it impacts our overall health is much more important. Nutrition is not as black and white as some people try to picture it. So one of the key differences between the keto diet and the carnivore diet is choosing to have most of your calories from either fat or protein, as this will have very different metabolic effects, especially in the long term. I'll come back to this later in the video. Both diets will have many variations depending on who do you listen to. However, the standard meal of each diet could look something like this. Keto, meat with veggies, extra fat, versus the carnivore diet, meat with more meat. And I have to add that the quality component of the diet is often ignored in both diets while the quality is one of the most important factors that will determine your long-term health. What are the health benefits of keto versus carnivore? Well, both diets have many health benefits, starting from more energy, weight loss, to reversing chronic conditions. The key factor of both diets leading to these benefits being overcoming impaired glucose metabolism, as it is involved in low energy, weight gain, and most common chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and dementia. Impaired glucose metabolism means that your body has difficulties dealing with carbs, glucose, and insulin. Reducing your carbs helps to eliminate this. And both the low carb keto and the carnivore diet remove the cause of poor health, which is the high carbohydrate diet. In addition, swapping carbs for protein and fat makes you more satiated, meaning you will eat less frequently. This helps you to fast more easily and helps you to keep your insulin low. Now, which diet, the low carb keto or the zero carb carnivore diet, would have the highest nutrient density and the best nutrient bioavailability? The low carb keto diet involves eating both animal-based and plant-based foods, things like fish and meat and eggs, non-starchy vegetables, berries, nuts, seeds, and fermented foods. It provides a wide range of nutrients. You get high amounts of vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. However, some plant foods might have poorer nutrient bioavailability, mostly due to their antinutrient content. But, as always, depending on the food, the cooking methods, and your health state, 
this diet can provide you with a full spectrum of nutrients your body needs to function optimally. However, some people, especially the ones who tried keto and it hasn't worked for them, or someone who can't tolerate plant foods well, would argue that all plant foods are simply bad and that they are totally unhealthy. But let's look deeper at some of the possible issues someone eating plants could experience. If you eat raw vegetables and it makes you bloated or inflamed, if it causes skin rashes or brain fog, you might have some hidden food allergies, food intolerances or food sensitivities. It seems obvious that if you remove all the plant foods, you go carnivore, you will get better. In this case, the carnivore diet could suit you better. You remove the triggers, it's sorted. It's definitely good if you remove all the grains and beans. But what if not all plant foods are harming you and removing only the actual trigger or changing the cooking method would resolve the problem? And you would be able to introduce back all the other healthy plant foods, things like most non-starchy veggies and berries. Also, you could be sensitive to lectins. That's a common antinutrient found in grains, beans, lentils, peppers, and tomatoes. But even if you are sensitive to lectins, lectins can be easily deactivated by steaming or pressure cooking your vegetables, as lectins are water soluble. Or maybe you're lacking digestive enzymes needed for digesting vegetables. Your body might be unable to digest certain foods because of the changes in your digestive system caused by your previous eating habits. You may also have imbalances in your gut, making it problematic to deal with raw plant foods that contain a lot of fiber. We need a healthy, diverse microbiome to be able to process all the fiber from plant foods. We are one-to-one -one human and bacterial cells. When we eat, we have to think about correctly feeding our human cells and our bacteria. Bacteria in our gut eat the fiber that we get from plant foods. Entirely removing or drastically reducing this fiber leads to our bacteria dying off. Our microbiome becomes less diverse and less populated in general. And studies show that following a high animal protein diet drastically reduces the diversity and the number of bacteria living in our gut. And this would only further decrease your ability to deal with plant foods. So the keto diet, when followed correctly, would support the microbiome much better. So would it fix this if we consume some probiotic foods while following a carnivore diet? Well, when we consume probiotics, such as kefir or kimchi, we also need prebiotics, foods like vegetables, berries, and chia seeds. We need this for a healthy and diverse microbiome. Our microbiome plays a vital role in vitamin synthesis, production of short-chain fatty acids, and it makes some enzymes required for digestion. Also, our microbiome plays a vital role in our immune system, as 70% of our immune system is located in the gut. We now know that imbalances in our gut microbiome can cause immune dysregulation, leading to autoimmune disorders. When some people say that keto didn't help them with their autoimmune disorders and carnivore diet was more useful, it could be because removing all the plant foods killed off most of the bacteria in your gut, the bad ones and the good ones. However, reintroducing the good bacteria back and giving them their food is still crucial for long-term health. Studies show that diverse and highly populated microbiome is linked with longer lifespan and better overall health. In the long term, it would be important to find your actual food triggers and eliminate them, instead of permanently removing all the plant foods. What does the research say about keto and carnivore? Now, if you look at all available research, the low-carb keto diet has way more research to support its health benefits. There are plenty of high-quality research studies, randomized controlled trials, double-blind randomized controlled trials, meta-analysis, proving that keto works for a variety of conditions and for weight loss. While there are a very few studies, if any at all, supporting the carnivore diet, I couldn't find any randomized controlled trials or meta-analysis. Instead, most of the evidence comes from people sharing their personal experiences, saying that they feel great on a carnivore diet. Now, we can't know for sure if feeling good is equal to good long-term health. 
I might feel great eating tons of sugar, but that doesn't mean that I will live long and healthily eating this way. Or it might be that at the moment we're simply lacking research, but once the research will be there, we will have a scientific confirmation that the carnivore diet is safe and effective. Or we might get some worrying results, showing that this diet is not healthy in the long term. For me personally, it is too early to take a diet that is not supported by research and start promoting it worldwide as the best diet. What if it's not? I recently watched a video where Dr. Paul Saladino, one of the main people supporting the carnivore diet, was asked to share his scientific evidence supporting the carnivore diet. And he just cited a study from 1930s where two people followed a carnivore diet for one year and they were fine. I don't know what about you, but for me it's not strong enough evidence. Also, Dr. Paul Saladino claims that vegetables are not good for us and that there is no research to support the health benefits of vegetables or any other plant foods. Now, is this not evidence? A study called Ginger on Human Health, a comprehensive systematic review of 109 randomized controlled trials. They confirmed that consuming ginger causes improvements of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy, inflammation, metabolic syndrome, digestive function, and colorectal cancer markers. Then the next study, blueberries improve biomarkers of cardiometabolic function in participants with metabolic syndrome, results from a six-month double-blind randomized controlled trial. They found that a daily intake of one cup of blueberries improved endothelial function and systemic arterial stiffness, which are both involved in cardiovascular disease. That shows how a plant-based food reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, there's a lot more research and much higher quality research supporting the health benefits of plant foods when compared to research supporting the carnivore diet. So I'm not pretty sure where did this doctor get his information. You have to be very careful who do you listen to and where do you get your information from. Now, which diet is better in the short and in the long term? Let's compare keto versus carnivore. It's the most important part of this video. Comparing the short and the long term effects of keto versus carnivore. This comes back to choosing either protein or fat as your main source of energy. As we know, in the short to medium term, both diets help you to lose excess weight, have more energy, have improved focus, and overcome various chronic conditions. Maybe the carnivore diet will be more beneficial for building muscle. We know that some people do better on keto and some people do better on carnivore. Carnivore is now being promoted as the best way of eating beyond keto. Let's look at what happens in the long term. Many people report feeling really good on a carnivore diet, but is feeling good the only thing we should be looking at? As always, health is way more complex than simply feeling good or bad. There are many biochemical processes happening behind the scenes, despite of us feeling good or bad. We have to look at the pathways that are activated when we follow either a high fat diet or a high protein diet. There are two major pathways that you can activate, depending on which macronutrient you will choose as your main energy source. The first one is the mTOR pathway. The mTOR pathway is the major nutrient-sensitive regulator of growth. It regulates our physiology, metabolism, aging, and it is involved in development of chronic diseases. You trigger it with either a high carb intake or a high protein intake. Insulin can also trigger mTOR. Whenever we eat, we trigger insulin, meaning we also activate mTOR. Now, as we know, the carnivore diet is high in protein. When body senses high availability of amino acids, you will have chronically activated mTOR. Triggering the mTOR pathway is all about growth. It makes you grow bigger muscles. You may seem very healthy and fit while eating a lot of protein, but at the same time, it shortens your life. While things like not eating, eating very little, or following a high-fat ketogenic diet decreases mTOR and supports autophagy, which is all about healing, repair, long and healthy life. Growth and longevity always compete with each other. They are opposing each other. From all the macronutrients, fat is the best for health and longevity as it doesn't activate mTOR pathway. 
some mTOR is fine when it is activated periodically. The real problem begins when we overactivate it by either eating too frequently or basing our diets on proteins or carbs. Or the worst case scenario, we eat too frequently and too much and we eat mostly carbs or proteins. This would drastically speed up aging, increase cancer risk and decrease your life expectancy. It is very important to think about our long-term goals. Do you want to be very fit but live a shorter life? Or do you want to be a bit less fit but have a longer and healthier life? When you follow a carnivore diet, you will definitely be heading towards more muscles and shorter life. I personally support a more balanced approach, following a healthy nutrient-dense keto, which is a more sustainable way of eating, giving you a variety of animal and plant foods. As most of your calories come from fat, you don't chronically stimulate mTOR or insulin, which leads to a healthier and longer life. This was my scientific comparison of keto versus carnivore diet. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're interested in trying out a healthy keto that helps you to optimize your health and prolong your life, check out my meal plans and coaching programs in the description of this video. You can support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.